Welcome to JSA TV, where we cover the latest stories, trends, and innovations from leaders in global connectivity, real estate, and the networks within. I'm Buffy Harakitis of JSA, and joining me today is our favorite data center cowboy uh, and influencer in our space, Bill Kleiman. Thank Bill, you welcome. so much for having me here. Now, I'm officially data center cowboy because I got a chance to wear this in a data center, an actual data center, so that's a personal achievement of mine that I was able to, to knock off the list. Yeah, we're so happy to have you here today and bump into you here at Data Cloud USA. Uh, so what are you thinking of the conference so far? You know, it, it's a blast. Obviously, you get a chance to see people that you really enjoy and everybody watching. Hey, I'm sorry you're not here. Next time, make sure you visit. It's a really great conference. Um, it's It's been wonderful to kind of get a chance to chat with folks. And obviously, the big topic of conversation is a two-letter acronym called AI. AI. And, uh, you know, this is this is the second year I've had a chance to be on the keynote stage for Data Cloud. And, you know, last year we talked about obviously something a little bit different. But this year... I mean, it, I asked the room full of people, and by the way, you can participate as well. How many folks in that room use ChatGPT? Holy cow, Buffy, the entire room raised their hand. Really? And the question was, what do you think about growth in this industry? Boom, all these hands go up. Oh my gosh, it's it's all driven by how you and I and all of those wonderful people listening to us right now, hi people, uh, how you use and leverage data. It's fundamentally changing and it's, it's, it's going to be changing in the near future. No more blue links from search engines. It's going to be more conscious answers that we get by interacting with our data differently. And that's going to be impacting everybody. Well, specifically with AI, uh, we were actually having a conversation last night during the I Am Women event. Uh, how many times are we going to hear AI at this conference? I've already lost count. I'm sure you have too. But specifically to data centers, mm -hmm. why don't you dive a little bit deeper into how is AI impacting our industry? Holy cow, Buffy. I know we've got a limited time here to chat about this. So uh, really quick, again, I'm Bill. I'm with a company called Neuro, N-E-U dot R-O. And we are this little organization that's helping not the big, massive companies, not the big, massive hyperscalers, but colos become data center companies mm -hmm. overnight. So to answer your question very specifically, none of this is going away. The way we interact with data is fundamentally changing, right? We're no longer going on our favorite search engine, whether it's Ask Jeeves or Yahoo, maybe right. even Ask Google. Jeeves. I wow. know. There's your reference of the day. <laughs> this went back and the it's day. it's a blue link. Again, we're, we're, we're working with things differently. Now, in the data center industry, we're experiencing something extraordinary. We, and this is something I haven't seen in my entire career. Over the past nine months, since this whole GPT thing came out, um, we have a customer base, and you know, not saying anything against the major public cloud providers, but we have a big customer base that wants to be within their co-location for data privacy, data locality. In some cases, maybe they don't want their data to be used to be training some big foundational model. Right. And so what we've been doing is we've been deploying the software layer into these, let's call them legacy traditional data centers okay. to allow them to compete against the major organizations out there. Hang on, Buffy. Think of it like the 1920s and the 1930s. It, all the data centers out there are gas stations and changing oil. And all of a sudden, in comes this energetic chipmunk and says that you need to start selling lottery tickets, Snickers bars, and Gatorade because you're going to make more money from your concession stand than you are selling gas and changing oil. Now, data centers are really good at capacity, space, and power. We help manage that concession stance from a multi-tenant multi perspective. But what's really special about that is that you're capturing a market that wants to be on-prem, that wants to be in your facility. The challenge for our industry right now, density, density and power consumption, where the average is like eight and a half, 10, 12 kW a rack. One of those NVIDIA six-unit DGX boxes, the H100s, is 10 0.5 kilowatts for just one. one. How are you supposed to support that? So right now, there's a huge market that's clamoring to go into on-premise data center space outside of folks like AWS. And the challenge is that these legacy data centers, well, they're trying to catch up. I'll finish with one final thought from one of my mentors, Peter Gross. Peter, if you're watching this, I, I love using Hi, this. Hi, Peter. All right. So the data center industry loves innovation as long as it's 10 years old. We don't have 10 years. We don't no, have we don't. we don't have 10 months over the past 
eight to nine months, we've seen the massive growth of these GPT-like technologies, and there's a massive market that wants to use this. My prediction is that you're going to see more co-location providers, ones that are maybe 10, 20, 30, 40, 50,000 square feet in space, not the big ones, transition their business, become higher density, start to deploy things like liquid cooling, rear door heat exchangers, immersion to support a bigger and broader and very eager customer base. Honestly, crazy exciting, Buffy. It is crazy exciting. And you talked a little bit about power. There's a panel coming up later this afternoon that I'm very interested in attending. I believe it's at 1230, mm -hmm. um, breaking the gridlock. And they're going to be diving deep oh, into the power gosh. constraints and different types of. I, I've got uh, I've got to tell you this. I'm sorry to interrupt everybody. Listen, I know we got like one or two minutes yeah. left here. Just a couple. So our company officially has uh, deployments in some of our partner data centers. So that means we're starting to see data of how much power this consumes. OK, on JSA TV live right now, we're going to throw out some really cool statistics that actually I don't think any of you have heard. OK. So a single Google search, this is published, uh, can power a 100 watt light bulb for 11 seconds. It consumes about 0.3 to 0.4 watt hours of energy. Cool. Now, a single time you go out there and ask ChatGPT a question, well, it can power my cell phone 60 times, consuming 800 to 1,000 times more power than one Google search. So that panel on power, holy cow, Buffy, and everybody listening, is going to be absolutely paramount to how we support the infrastructures of the future. Amazing. Thank you so much. Always a pleasure, Bill, to have you here on JSA TV. And of course, run into you at some of these key conferences uh, here at Data Cloud USA in Austin, Texas. Our favorite data center cowboy, one of the biggest influencers in the space. Bill, thanks again for joining us. Thank you so much, Buffy. Thank you, everyone, for listening. And hang on a second. Hang on a second. Check out Greener Data, the book. I'm one of the co-authors. And volume two is yes. coming out really soon. And I get a chance to put a chapter in there as well. Don't miss it. It's it's right here. Hashtag Greener Data. It's an amazing book out on Amazon. It is an Amazon bestseller. Be sure to check it out. Yes, it's launching. Volume two is launching on Earth Day 2024. And we are officially counting down. And such an honor and pleasure to have you as one of the authors of the Greener Data book. Thanks, Bobby. Thanks again. Thank you, viewers, for tuning in. Stay curious, stay connected, and happy networking.